all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another T&I toy review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at three of the new Captain Marvel movie 6-inch Marvel Legend figures from Hasbro. Now specifically, I'm going to be taking a look at the new Captain Marvel figure, the one with the bomber jacket and her cat Goose, the scroll named Talos, and then the Kree agent named Yon Rog. And all three of these do come in the same kind of packaging that we've been seeing with all the Marvel Legends. You've got the Legend Series logo up at the top. You've got the figures clearly displayed in the window box packaging. And then down below, you've got the Captain Marvel movie logo for each one and the names of the characters. On the sides of the packaging with these, you have artwork for each of the characters as opposed to actual images from the movie. And then on the back of the packaging, you have the same kind of artwork for all three characters. And then you also have brief bios for each one in multiple languages. So first of all, we've got Captain Marvel, Talos, and finally Yon rog Now the thing I want to note about Yon rog which I think is kind of interesting, is it does mention the Supreme Intelligence, which would indicate that we will see that character in the movie. So if we do, I hope sometime down the road we eventually see, see some kind of Marvel Legend version of the Supreme Intelligence, especially if he looks like he does in the comic books. And then finally down below we have a look at all the figures in the wave that you need to get in order to complete the Kree Sentry Build-A-Figure. All right, let's get these open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside of the packaging along with their other contents. Now, first of all, for the Kree Sentry Builder figure, we get the left arm with the Captain Marvel figure, we get the left leg with the scroll figure, and then we get the torso section with the Kree Commander figure. And I will be looking at the Kree Sentry in its own review once I've looked at all the figures in this wave, so be sure to check back for that. Now, as far as accessories for the actual figures themselves, these figures are pretty light on the accessory department. Starting with the Yon Rog figure, the only thing he comes with is a blaster pistol, and this is done with a gray plastic. Sculpting detail looks to be pretty good. I have not seen the movie, so I don't know if this is movie accurate, but this doesn't look like a weapon that we've seen used in the Marvel Legend line before, which leads me to think that this is something you know we see actually used in the movie and is accurate to that. But as far as paint detail goes, it's just gray plastic. Now he can only hold the weapon in the right hand. He has a uh, left hand is closed fisted, so um, you can only put it in the right. And he does have a trigger finger, so he does hold the weapon pretty tight. And unfortunately, and maybe this is movie accurate, but there's no uh, holster on the figure, so if he's not using the weapon, you just have to set it off to the side. It would have been nice if there was a holster, though. Again, that might not be movie accurate, so I can't totally fault the figure if that is the case. Now, the Captain Marvel figure, the only thing she comes with is this cat, which is named Goose, and this cat must play some kind of significant role in the movie since it even has its own character poster from Marvel Studios. But as far as this goes, there's no articulation. It's very similar looking to the one that we saw, the alien version that we saw with the Nick Fury figure that I looked at the other week. There's no handcuffs or anything on this version. So I don't know if this is the same cat only, you know, exposed as an alien, or if there's a real cat and then there's also an alien version. I, I'm not entirely sure. But again, it looks very similar, same kind of coloring and everything with the orange and then the lighter color on the underside. There's no articulation on this. Basically, all you can do is the figure is made so you can kind of have her hold it in her hands like you see in the packaging but beyond that I mean you can set this one on the ground so it looks like he's kind of uh, reaching out to play with something but really you know there's just not a whole lot you can do with this thing and again you can have the figure hold the cat the figure comes with two open hands and so you can just kind of sit it in there now my recommendation if you want to display the figure with her holding the cat I would not remove the little rubber bands that are included when you first take it out of the packaging that way she'll hold it much more securely as it is if you take those bands off then if you start moving the figure around she'll likely drop the cat since you're just essentially setting it in those open hands and then finally we have the scroll figure and this thing comes with absolutely no accessories other than the build a figure piece which i think is very disappointing i think it would have been really nice if they'd included something that it would you know kind of mimic his shape-shifting abilities but as it is you just get the figure itself 
Okay, now on to the figure. Starting with the Captain Marvel figure. This is the second Captain Marvel figure that we've gotten in this wave. And honestly, you know, I'm not impressed. I'm even less impressed with this version than the first one, which I, I wasn't too fond of either, if you caught my review of that one. I think this head sculpt looks even less like Brie Larson, and I'll, I'll give you a close-up in just a moment. But the figure itself is pretty much, other than the head sculpt, is pretty much the same. You get the added bomber jacket, and you get uh, an, two of open hands but as far as paint detail and and such you know maybe the line work on the gold on this one is a little more detailed than on this one and obviously you don't have the shoulder pads because she's wearing the jacket and you know maybe the gold stands out a little bit better on this figure but I still wouldn't say it's great the stars are both sculpted and the line work on the legs and stuff are all sculpted but again I'm just not overly impressed with either one of these figures and the second one I, I think is even less impressive. So here's a close-up so you can see both face sculpts and again neither one to me looks really like Brie Larson but I do think this one with the longer hair looks maybe a hair better than this one. It doesn't help that this one has a big black mark on her forehead which I'm sure is just unique to my figure but again it really doesn't help the look of it but to me neither one looks like Brie Larson. I you know Hasbro's been doing such a good job with their movie face sculpts. I don't really know what happened here. It kind of reminds me of that first wave of Avengers Infinity War figures that we got last year. I don't know if this wave was rust or what have you, but I just don't think either one of these look much like Brie Larson and not terribly impressed with, you know, the overall figures in general. Now this one, the jacket, the jacket is a separate piece. It's made with a vinyl material. The sleeves are sculpted, so, you know, you can't actually take the jacket off. And at first I thought these were like bracelets, but it's actually, I think this is just part of the jacket, this uh, darker piece here. You know, so I, I don't think, it looks kind of like, you know, Cree bracelets, but but I think that's just part of the jacket. Now you do have uh, this insignia on the back, which I'm assuming is something you see in the movie. Looks like an eagle or something. It's hard to make out. It's kind of uh, washed out a little bit, which that might be movie accurate as well. I'm not entirely sure. But you know, overall, you know, I, if, if, if we were gonna get a second Brie Larson Captain Marvel figure in the same wave, I think it would have been better if Hasbro had given us a version in her civilian clothes with like the shield hat, like you see in the trailers. That seems like something you would see her more in than just wearing the bomber jacket this is probably a cheaper route to go since you can essentially use the same figure but i would have rather if we were going to get two brie larson figures in the same wave i would have rather gotten her civilian clothes over just the bomber jacket and the short hair the hands and the head sculpts are interchangeable between the two captain marvel figures now on to the scroll figures so the scroll figure i think hasbro's done a good job here now, I don't really like the way these movie scrolls look. I think that I like the comic book versions better. Um, but, you know, as far as the figure goes, I, I can't really complain. It seems to be pretty accurate to what we've seen in the trailers. Even has some, looks like some wrinkles on the chin. I don't know if that's supposed to be wrinkles or just paint because he's got this purple on his chin, which is also on the top of his head. Uh, so that's kind of weird. And you've got some wash in there with the green. He's got the, the Spock-like ears. And then he's got this uh, green skin tone. Tone, the lizard like skin tone and the eyes look pretty good on this one as well and then he's got the hands that are green and one glove the right hand has got like fingerless gloves and then the left hand he has no glove on at all I don't know why that he's only wearing one glove I don't know if that's just the outfit or if there's a specific reason for that now this outer coat piece is actually removable uh, there's not a whole lot of detail it just uh, snaps into place here and there's not a whole lot of detail underneath it's just a, a shirt that's the same color as the pants, but you can, if you want to, take this uh, coat off. The sleeves of the coat are sculpted, so um, you know I don't know how good it's going to really look if you take it off. And then when if you unsnap this, it's it's kind of a pain to get it snapped back on. So. My recommendation would be just leave the coat on, but again, technically it is removable. You've got these shoulder pads with some metallic silver and the purple on the sides there, and you've got this line work sculpted throughout on both the coat and the sleeves, and then you've got some sculpting detail on the pants. You've got this one purple stripe there, and the rest of the pants are just that kind of dark gray color. But like I said, this figure, even though I'm a little disappointed we didn't get any kind of shape-shifting accessories with it, I think it does look pretty movie accurate. Okay, and then finally we have 
the Jan Rog figure, and with the name does reveal some spoilers, I'm guessing. So if you're not familiar, and if, if you're not familiar with the character from the comics and you don't want any kind of movie spoilers, you might want to fast forward a minute. But in the comic books, this guy is essentially a villain. He's taken on uh, Captain Marvel himself and Carol Danvers. Essentially, he's filled with jealousy, and that jealousy turns him, you know, turns into rage, and he ends up, you know, fighting against Captain Marvel and and such. So um, I'm guessing in the movie he starts out as a good guy and ends up becoming a bad guy, maybe even the main bad guy of the movie, I don't know, but definitely I think this guy is going to be a bad guy and is definitely not Captain Marvel like some had suspected originally when we first saw this figure. Now for the figure itself, the first thing I want to know is with the head sculpt, and while it doesn't look bad, I will say it looks pretty generic, so really, you know, there's no indication of it, you know, being based on the actual actor from the movie. It would have been nice if we'd gotten an unmasked head sculpt with this version since I'm guessing he probably doesn't wear this helmet that often in the movie. Now I will say that with the helmet on, this probably will make a nice generic Kree army builder if you want to use it that way. You know, this figure in general is just wearing the Kree outfit so with the helmet, you know, you could definitely, you know, use this even with your comic book based figures. I think it would work well though he does have the normal skin tone as opposed to blue skin. Now he's got white out eyes and he's got black and some metallic silver here on the top of the helmet a little bit of marbleization on the top there but I think that actually looks pretty good and then you've got the metallic green and some silver here on the shoulder pads and the metallic silver here on his chest with the star and this line work the star is sculpted and I think the star actually looks pretty good on this figure and then you've got the black and the metallic greens throughout you've got a little silver on the buckle there now he's got these weird gauntlets and these are separate pieces that look like are glued onto the figure. I don't know if these are blasters or, or what since I haven't seen the movie, but definitely they're kind of weird looking because they stick out and, you know, again, they're separate pieces on the figure that look like have been glued on there. And then you've got the black on the legs with some green, uh, metallic green, and then you've got the knee pads and the boots with some sculpting detail as well. So like I said, as far as the actual character, it seems pretty generic, but if you wanted to use this as a Kree army builder, I think it would work well either with your movie or or your comic book based figures. Okay, so the scale between the three figures seems to be pretty good. The scroll is the tallest of the three, and he comes in just a little bit over six and a half inches tall. The shortest of the three is the Captain Marvel figure, and she comes in just under six and a quarter inches. And then the, the Kree uh, officer, he comes in just a little bit under six and a half inches, but is not quite as tall as the scroll figure. And here's a comparison of all five Captain Marvel movie figures that were released in this wave, which includes the Nick Fury and the first version of Captain Marvel. And again, the scale between all these seems to be pretty good. And here's a quick comparison of the two versions of the cat. So this is the one that came with the Nick Fury with the handcuffs and everything, which is obviously some kind of alien. And then we've got the version that comes with the Captain Marvel figure, which is probably just a normal cat goose. Now, as far as articulation goes, so with the Captain Marvel, figure it's the same as the first Captain Marvel figure that I reviewed the other day you've got the single hinged elbows so typical Marvel Legends female articulation and then with these two the the Kree officer and the scroll it's pretty much the same articulation this figure does the scroll does have an ab crunch joint but when you have the coat on obviously that is a bit limited so if you take the coat off you get much more crunching back and forth movement with this one but otherwise you know articulation is pretty much the the same so we'll go over it real quick with the Kree officer you can turn the head to the left and to the right and he can look down pretty good and he can actually look up really good as well so if you want to put him in some kind of flight pose or stuff you can do that you don't really get much in the way of head pivot now with the arms you can get the arm out good you've got good rotation there at the shoulder you've got a bicep swivel you've got a double hinged elbow so pretty good bending there and then you've got rotation with the hands and you have the hinges on the hand so the up and down movement you have the ab crunch joint so you can crunch forward about that much and then you can look back about that much you get a waist swivel with this one with the legs you can do the splits that much 
you can do the leg forward good and you can do the leg back you get a thigh swivel you get a double jointed knee so good bending there at the knee and then you get hinges on the feet so up and down movement and you do get ankle pivot and you also get a boot cuff swivel with this one and two peg holes on the bottom the scroll of the does not have a boot cuff swivel and then again when you have the jacket on that does limit some of the leg movement as far as doing the splits okay so that's my review so overall i would say that while i'm not super impressed with any of these figures in fact to me this entire wave is pretty weak i, I don't know what it is about these first wave of movie figures that hasbro does you know it was kind of the same thing last year with the avengers infinity war i don't know if it's because they don't have enough material to go by or or they're rushing them or what but overall i, I would say this is a pretty weak wave in general but out of the three figures here the scroll figure is probably my favorite i do think that one looks pretty movie accurate even though i don't really like the way the scrolls look in the movie but i can't complain as far as the figure goes in that regard and i think they did a good job with the head sculpt the colors pop nicely on it the biggest complaint is there's no accessories to mimic the shape shifting abilities so there's really not much you can do with the figure in general now the weakest figure in the entire wave i would say is this captain marvel figure the head sculpt looks to me nothing like brie larson even worse than the first captain marvel figure from this wave you get just it's the same figure as that first one other than the bomber jacket and a head sculpt that i don't think looks very good so this entire figure just seems kind of pointless to me now the final figure the yon rog figure i don't think is bad i, I think overall looks pretty good however it does seem pretty generic to me the the helmet the helmeted head really doesn't look anything like the actor you know all you see is just a small part of his face so i think it would have definitely been nice from a movie perspective if we'd gotten an unmasked head sculpt with this one but i do think if you want to use this it's just a generic kree soldier army builder i think it will work nicely either with your movie figures or even with your comic book based figures and so from that regards you know this figure might be worth checking out now all three of these figures along with the rest of the wave has started to see a release we'll have a full image gallery up at marvelousnews.com there'll be a link in the video description below as always leave a comment let me know what you guys think also if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel by hitting that button down below you should also hit the bell notification so alerted every time i upload a new video and of course you can also follow me on my facebook twitter and instagram accounts i have links to all those in the video description as well and until next time guys i'll catch you later